Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the holy book. لَن تَرْضَى عَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَنْ نَصَارَى حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِنَّتَهُمْ Allah Almighty states that never ever will the Jews nor the Christians be pleased with you until you follow their religion. So no matter how many world cups you host, how many billions of pounds you spend to please and host the kuffar, how much money you spend to please them, to satisfy them, to agree with their ways and their norms and their values. Allah Ta'ala has made it very, very clear. No matter how much you try to say, I am a modern Muslim, I am not extreme. I follow your version. No. Regardless of this, Allah says, Never ever will the Jews or the Christians be happy with you until you follow their religion. Until you become a kafir. And they will throw everything at you. They will throw their entertainment at you. They will throw their filth at you. The filth that they have on social media, the nudity, <coughs> the adultery they have widespread in their culture. And do you know, as a matter of fact, now, for the first time in British history, the census, which was recently carried out amongst the British population, the majority of the British population has become non-religious atheists. They do not believe in God anymore. They have rejected Allah. That previously, they were Christian, at the very least. They went to church. They believed in God. They believed in Jesus, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was salam. But today, they are standing somewhere else in a very dangerous place. But not only that, they want to take you there as well. This is what a Muslim needs to wake up to. And I especially call out those Imams and those puppets of the regime who praise the monarchs, who praise the king and queen, and who try to water down and dilute Islam, who support the British army, which oppresses and kills innocent people worldwide, and who call for a new liberal and reformed version of Islam, which is not the traditional Islam of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa these people will be held responsible for their actions. Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَكِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah mentions the hypocrites. He says, honor is for Allah, for the messenger and for the believers. And the hypocrites do not know. So they are munafiqun who try to seek honor, taking a beggar's bowl in front of the kuffar. Like the present day Muslim rulers. The so-called rulers in Muslim countries, what do they do? They seek to please the kuffar, they do not seek to please Allah. But wallahi, if they were in their senses and if they took heed and made tawbah today and returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I promise you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the state of the ummah in one day. This is possible. 229 billion pounds, I believe, was spent by the Qatari government on hosting the World Cup. That is an enormous amount of money. With that much money, you can make 229 million people give them a thousand pounds each. A grand each to how many people? 229 million people, a quarter of a billion, almost. Yeah, A quarter of a billion people, you can give them a grand each and think how many Muslims are refugees, how many Muslims are being oppressed, how many Muslims in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen, currently as we speak, are living in poverty. And these people have no regard and people are saying, oh, certain people have become Muslims through this World Cup. SubhanAllah. Did it cost you 229 billion pounds just to make people Muslims? No. In fact, that money could have been channeled to Africa. If you went the way the Christian missionaries are doing in Africa, they spend money on charity in poor places where Muslims live there. And they give them bread. They give them water. They give them shelter. And you know what else they give them? They give them Christianity. Those people accept Christianity. They lose their faith. This is happening in the world. Because then people have nothing. They are destitute. And what do the Christian missionaries do? They go there, they feed them, they clothe them, and then they will spread Christianity to them. They will say, see, Christianity is the truth. Astaghfirullah wa iyyad billahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to adhere to our principles and our deen, especially in these times of fitna. And I strongly condemn the statements of a certain individual today in Britain who, astaghfirullah, insulted Sayyidina Isa ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wa salam. One individual made disgusting remarks. And he, Ma'az Allah, claimed that Sayyidina Isa al-Islam, Astaghfirullah, Nakale kufur, na kufur bashad. He stated that Sayyidina Isa al-Islam, he said that he was transgender. Ma'az Allah. Disgusting. And these kind of comments would not come from a person who is true to Sayyidina Isa al-Islam. And my message goes out to the Christians out there. That if you want to truly honor the prophets of Allah, 
then you must accept Islam. MashaAllah. Because only Islam honors all the prophets of Islam. Mashallah. Whether it's Moses, Sayyidina Musa alayhi Islam, Jesus, Sayyidina Isa alayhi Islam, or our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Only Islam honors the prophets. Mashallah. Look at your culture. Look at the state of you. Look at your media. Look at your celebrities. Look at the state of your nation. You are teaching your children that there are 100 genders. Your children don't even know what's male, what's female. And then you are filling their heads with filth in primary schools. You have lost your morals, you have lost your religion, you have lost your minds. And now you are trying to impose that way of life and way of thinking upon the rest of the world. That's not going to work. <laughs> because Alhamdulillah, as long as we have Al-Quran al karim the Book of Allah, as long as we have the Sunnah of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and as long as we have Iman, we will always challenge you. And we will never accept you. And never bow down to your ways. Lakum deenukum To you, your way. If you wish to be gay, you wish to be lesbian, whatever you wish to do in your life, that's your choice. But you will be held to account by Allah Almighty. And we, our way, la ikraha fi deen. Look at the beauty of our religion. There is no compulsion whatsoever in Islam. We do not force you to accept our way. But look at these people, they talk about freedom. But their freedom is to force others to accept their way and to impose their ideology over even the youngest children who are vulnerable, unable to even discern what is right and wrong. May Allah Almighty give these people aql, give them intellect and grant them guidance and give Muslims the tawfiq to wake up before it's too late. Because when it is too late, my dear brothers, my dear elders, when it's the time of death, then there is no turning back of that clock. Establish your salah. Reconnect to Allah and reconnect your children to Allah as well. Teach them Islam. Tell them about your deen. Tell them about our Nabi. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Because when that time comes, when that time of fitna increases so much, you will be unable to control matters when they go out of your hand. Dear brothers, dear elders, I would just like to mention, as we all know, there is the current crisis of living. Bills are going crazy. Please, the masjid is also struggling in this regard. Those of you who do have extra money, Allah bless you all. Please try to support the masjid, inshallah, for the bills. And the namazis, especially those who attend the masjid, even you know the teachers at the masjid, I tell them, please make sure when you go to the masjid, treat it better than you treat your own house. Switch off the lights. Switch off the heating when you leave. Use the wuzu khana appropriately. Leave it clean. Leave it in the state that you saw it in. This is something which is basic mannerism. Right? I see many times I have to switch the lights off myself. I have to switch the heating off myself. I go and double check around the rooms. And please, this is a responsibility collectively upon all the community. It's not a single person's job to go around and check the masjid. And especially when we take care in doing these things in our own homes, we have to take extra care in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And please try to contribute and support the cause of the masjid as much as possible.